Citation and Secretariat, this century's wonder horses, as they go for their Triple Crown wins 25 years apart. The Triple Crown of Racing, Citation and Secretariat, is the theme of our show on The Way It Was. Welcome to another American Sports Classic. Today, two immortal thoroughbreds born 25 years apart and their quest for the Triple Crown. Now let's meet the men who guided these wonder horses. In 1948, he's riding Calumet Farm's Citation, trained by Ben Jones. Racing experts call him the greatest jockey of all time, the immortal Eddie Arcaro. And the superb Canadian rider, seeking his first Triple Crown in 1973 aboard Meadow Stables Secretariat, Ron Turcott. To help us relive thoroughbred history, a Hall of Fame racing announcer, Wynn Elliott. Oh, Wynn, let's first go back to 1948 and a racehorse that the entire country was talking about, Citation. Well, he was part, as Eddie Arcara will tell you, of a fabulous string of horses owned by the Wrights, the Calumet Farm. There were so many of them, Bardstown, uh, Arm, Citation, Twilight, Tear, Cold Town, uh, Calumet Farms, and their horses were synonymous with the greatness in racing. And I was a fan of Citation. Not only was an observer, but I was a fan. Like I rooted for Babe Ruth, I rooted for Citation. He could do no wrong, and he almost never did on the track, coming into the Derby especially. And, of course, another horse, Came almost like a movie star in 1973, Secretariat. Secretariat, as Ronnie will tell you, not only was a great runner, but he looked the part. A lot of horses looked like milk horses, but uh, uh, Secretariat looked like he was made in heaven. Okay, let's go back now to May 1948. It's the 74th running of the Kentucky Derby and the voice of Wynn Elliott. The twin spires of world-famed Churchill Downs Racetrack. You know what that means. Kentucky Derby, Louisville, Kentucky. This the 74th edition. And fans from all over the nation are here to see the run for the roses. The Calumet Farm entry of Citation and Coal Town, two to five. And it's going to be a classic American sporting event. The traditional 100,000 are on hand. It's a cold, wet day, but that doesn't keep folks from staying away from the windows and filling the track. The track, incidentally, wet and sloppy. And there he is, Mr. Big Citation, his stable mate, Coal Town, Eddie Arcaro getting up on Citation. Ben Jones, the trainer, was in that picture, too. And here they come out on the track. Eddie and Citation, stable mate, Jockey Pearson, and Coal Town. And the horse that's supposed to have a chance to possibly upset the Calumet pair, my request. And so, the field takes shape. It's Citation number one, Coal Town 1A. My request is number six on the outside. Billings is number five. Grand Pair is number four. And Escadrue is number three. Look at the track. It's heavy and sloppy as Ruby White. The starter gets up on the stands and looks at the field. They're in, almost ready. And they're off, and the Calumet Farm entry on the rail goes for the lead immediately. Citation tries, but he retires in favor of his stablemate, the speedier of the two right at the moment. That's Cold Town, like a jackrabbit under Pearson. He goes for the lead, and he has it, and by daylight. And we switch to slow motion, but it doesn't slow down Cold Town as they go around that first turn. Look at him widen that lead. There were those who thought Cold Town was the better of the two Calumet horses, but not Ben Jones. And Arcaro a little concerned, but he stayed with his citation, and this is the reason why, as they go up the backstretch. Big sigh starts eating up that wet track, and as they come to the head of the stretch, Cold Town has just about had it. Better put, Citation is taking it. And look at him stretch out. A little reminder that he's still on the race for Eddie. Now he lengthens out, and as he pleases with his ears standing up, he's not under any kind of pressure. He's got it. Citation, the winner of the 1948 Kentucky Derby. And a happy Eddie Arcaro as he comes back to the plaudits of the crowd, greeted by plain Ben Jones and owner Warren Wright. And there they are, the traditional handshake, the blanket of roses. And all that goes down in the history books for Citation, the great Calumet horse. He's got one in the bag and two to go. 
Well, what do you say we jump ahead now? Let's go 25 years ahead to Churchill Downs, May 5th, 1973. And now it's the 99th running of the Derby. It's been a quarter of a century since we had a three-year-old, the caliber of Citation, who won that Kentucky Derby in Louisville. And there are those who say this year, Secretariat, the three-year-old from Meadow Stable, owned by Penny Tweedy and trained by Lucian Lauren, there are those who say on the basis of the brilliant two-year-old career, maybe he can do what race trackers have been hoping for for 25 years. He had a bad race in the Wood Memorial, remember. And we're ready for the 99th running of the Derby. Watch Shecky Green, number 11. He's got the speed, angle light. Remember, he won the Wood Memorial Royal, and Regal is fast. Four go, he's big, he's got the credentials, or will it be Secretariat? Chick Anderson, the call. Secretariat throws his head a bit. And they're off for the lead. On the inside, that's Angle Light for the lead. On the outside, Shecky Green, Royal and Regal. Then on the rail, it's Restless Jet, followed by our natives. Up on the outside is Gold Bag. If I understand for the first time, Shecky Green is showing the way by a length and a half. Royal and Regal now being moved to the inside, looking for room. Gold Bag is up on the outside. Then on the rail, it's Angle Light, followed by Sham. Our native, Restless Jet, it's my gallant, then Forgo. On the outside, Navajo, followed by Secretariat, Warbuck, and finally, twice a print. We're moving on the turn, the leader is Shecky Green, leading by two and a half lengths. Goldbag is second by a head. Jam now third on the outside by two lengths. Royal and Regal fourth, two lengths, then back to... Angle Light in fifth, the Secretariat has made a sudden move and is now sixth. Then it's Restless Jet, our native beginning to move up. Navajo, Borgo, and Warbuck beginning to move up, followed by My Gallup and Twice a Prince. They're into the turn and bunching for the lead with Shecky Green, still the leader by a half a length. On the outside and challenging is Sham, and he's now got a head in front. Now Shecky Green responds to the challenge, and those two are heads apart. Royal and Regal is third and holding on. Goldback drops back. Secretariat is fourth and moving up on the outside and is now third and moving at the leaders as they come for the head of the stretch. They're at the head of the stretch and Cham is the leader. He leads it by a length. Secretariat is in the center of the racetrack and driving. Jackie Green now drops back. Coming on a bit is Forgo, our native on the outside. Now and then the stretch. It's sec Secretariat. Secretariat on the outside to take the lead. Cham holding in second. It's Secretariat moving away. He has it by two and a half. Cham then on the outside, our native. At the wire, it's going to be Secretariat. He wins it by two lengths. Cham is second. Our native third by an X. Forgo is fourth. Restless Jet is fifth. Hey, this is your fourth Derby winner, Lauren in 38, Whirl Away 41, Hoop Jr. Now citation. After the race, you made a prediction that Citation would win the Triple Crown. Did, uh, did you feel that way? I certainly did. Yeah. In fact, I made a comment in the uh, about the Belmont I was interviewed, and somebody says, well, how about Citation tomorrow? I says, the only way he can get beat is if I fall off of him. <laughs> and if you see this, <laughs> if you see it, they, if this movie will show you, if this movie will show it, that you have, you're going to see him stumble leaving the gate, and yeah. I think I lost 10 years of my life right really? there. You almost, <laughs> you almost <laughs> fell out of it. Because I had remembered yeah. what I your said. Your prediction. Now, Ron, that was your second consecutive uh, derby win. You had Reaver Ridge and won the derby the year before. Well, the next year, you win with Secretariat. What you're thinking about the Preakness and the Belmont with Secretariat? Well, I really felt it was downhill from there on, because I figure what well, the end no problem you know you don't run into no problem with the horse or anything i felt he was that kind of horse could overtake secretary anything. could run in mud couldn't he oh he'd run on anything all right let's go to the preakness now the second leg of the triple crown we're in baltimore may 15th 1948 here again the voice of win elliott Second running of the Preakness at Pimlico. The weather good. The track is heavy. Big crowd and big question. Can Citation take the second leg of racing's triple crown? Owner Warren Wright thinks he can. The parade to the post. There are only four entered today. Hey, there's Chief of the FBI, J. Edgar Hoover. And they're off. And the, the Devil's Red of Eddie Arcaro and Citation immediately go for the lead. And the big horse, as he hits the first turn, has the lead. Vulcans Forge, Boulevard, and Better Self try to get closer in the backstretch, but it's no go. And as 
they turn the final turn and into home under control Eddie Arcaro pumping away the horse doing it on his own the 1948 Preakness Stakes winner is Citation and now all he needs is the Belmont to become the first horse since Assault to win the Triple Crown there's Eddie and Big Cy from Calumet what a pair now it's 25 years later it's up to date Pimlico racetrack we're in Baltimore Maryland beautiful day and lots of folks especially in the infield to see if Secretariat on this day can do the mile and three sixteenths and win the second leg the Preakness and there he is in the infield being saddled before all the folks Lucian Lauren at his head Secretariat is two to five the competition hoping to catch number three Sham goes off for three to one and so we're ready that magic moment for the running of the Preakness and the call Chick Anderson Oh, the early lead, that deadly dream on the outside, it's Holy Taj. Then it's also Torsion on the outside. They're coming by us. It's a Coley Taj getting it. Needs to moving away by about two and a half as they pass the sand. Settling into second, Torsion. Sham has good position, third on the rail. It's another three lengths back, Deadly Dream. Then our native and Secretariat is last again as they move into the first turn. They're into the turn. A Coley Taj has it by two lengths. Torsion second by a length, and then Sham third. Sham under an easy hold right now, but here comes Secretariat. He's moving fast, and he's going to the outside. He's going for the lead, and it's right now he's looking for it. Ronnie Turcott sends him alongside a Coley Taj. Here we have it. A Coley Taj is the leader, but Sham, rather, Secretariat is right alongside. Then still further back, that is Sham now going to the outside in third. We're moving down the back stretch. Secretariat holding it by a length and a half. Here comes Sham second on the outside now. Now it's Secretariat the leader by a length and a half with Sham moving into second. And it looks like a Cole Taj has had it, dropping back in third. Coming on in fourth is our native, and he's pretty close. Torsion fifth, and a trailer way back is Deadly Dream. They're on the turn, and here's the race, folks. Secretariat trying to hold it, and Sham is driving to get him. These two are beginning to open a few lengths as our native settles into third, and he has about three lengths on a Cole Taj. Head of the stretch, Secretariat, two and a half. Sham under a strong left-handed whip, and he's making his run now, but it's still Secretariat holding on. Secretariat by two lengths. Sham driving second. There's a strong left-handed whip again by Pinkai. He goes to it time and time again, but Ronnie Turcott has his whip put away, and Secretariat has him put away. He's been getting the draw away. It is Secretariat. who made a very, very swift move on the back stretch, took the lead surprisingly. Secretariat has now won the Kentucky Derby and the Preakness Stakes, and this time he did it the same way. It's a mile and a half, and Eddie R. Carroll is about to become the only jockey in racing history to win a second Triple Crown. For Ron Turcott, he must win this race to prove Secretariat's greatness. So now let's go back to New York and the voice of Win Elliott. It's 1948 in the 80th running of the Belmont Stakes, and this huge crowd is out to see Ken Citation win the mile-and-a-half test of champions. If he does, he takes the Triple Crown, the first to do it since King Ranch's assault. And here's Eddie Arcaro and Calumet Farms Citation. A field of eight now as they approach the track, and the crowd tenses in anticipation. Can Big Cy do it? He's on the rail. Watch him. I don't know whether he's too eager or what, but he stumbles coming out of the gate, even in slow motion. But Eddie gets him righted, and look at the big horse reach out with that tremendous stride. They say he can go 25 feet. Well, he's using all of them now as he goes for the lead. And here they are as they come to the first turn. Eddie has him snug on the rail. He knows what kind of a horse he's got, and he starts to lengthen his lead as they go up the back stretch. And Eddie can sense victory as this field of eight vainly tries to keep up with Big Cy. He lengthens his lead in the home stretch. Five, six, and here he goes with clouds of dust behind him and eight lengths between him and the next horse. And look at that picture of power, the triple crown winner, Eddie Arcaro and Citation. What a horse. What a ride. And what a day as Jimmy Jones brings the winning duo back to greet owner Warren Wright and the first Triple Crown winner since King Ranch's assault did it. What a victory for Big Side 
And what a day for Eddie, his second Triple Crown win now, first on Whirl Away, and today on Citation. And there they are, Citation and Jones. 1973, and it's Big Red, Secretariat. He's already won the first two. Can he take the Belmont and become this first since Citation to win the Triple Crown? Chick Anderson is at Belmont Park, ready for the race in the call. Looks like the early lead goes to Mike Gallant. Yes, Mike Gallant going for the lead with twice the turn on the outside. Secretary of the way very well, has good position on the rail, and he's actually now going up with the leader. We're moving for the first turn. It is Secretary. Cam on the outside is also moving along strongly. And now it's Cam. Cam and Secretary are right together into the first turn. Mike Gallant has third behind them. Then it's twice the prince, and the trailer is private smiles as they go by the turn. Those two together, Sham on the outside. Sham getting ahead in front as they move around the turn with Secretary at second. Then there's a large gap. Make it eight lengths back to Mike Gallant in third and Vice the Prince fourth. And Private Smiles is still the trailer. They're on the back stretch. It's almost a match race now. Secretariat's on the inside, by ahead. Sham is on the outside. They've opened ten lengths on Mike Gallant, who is third by ahead, with Vice the Prince fourth. Then it's another eight lengths back to Private Smiles, who is trailing the field. They continue down the back stretch, and that's Secretariat not taking the lead. He's got it by about a length and a half. Still Sham, ten lengths back, Mike Gallant, Vice the Prince. They're moving on the turn now. For the turn, it's Secretariat. It looks like he's opening. The lead is increasing. Make it three, three and a half. He's moving into the turn. Secretariat holding on to a large lead. Jam is second, and then it's a long way back to my gallon and twice the print. They're on the turn. It's Secretariat is blazing along. The first three quarters of a mile in 109 and four fifths. Secretariat is widening now. He is moving like a tremendous machine. Secretariat by 12. Secretariat by 14 lengths on the turn. Sam is dropping back. It looks like they'll catch him today as Mike Allen and Price the Prince are both coming up to him now. But Secretariat is all alone. He's out there almost a sixteenth of a mile away from the rest of the horses. Secretariat is in a position that seems impossible to catch. He's into the stretch. Secretariat leads his field by 18 lengths. And now Price the Prince has taken second. shut off two or three times on him in this race and it is still one 
But in all of Citation's races, I never let him run. I don't know. If, I, mean, I don't know. If, you know, sitting here talking, how fast could he have run? I don't know. I know the only time that they asked Citation to run, he broke a world's record. He ran a mile and 33. The first time that any horse had ever done it. I had never let him run. Any time I ever rode him, I'd never let him run. Here he is. Look at that stride. That's right. But as I say, I'd, I'd never let uh, let him fully out in uh, any of his three-year-old races. Citation didn't race as a four-year-old, Eddie. What happened? The, l the last race he ran as a three-year-old, and uh, again, Ben Jones shouldn't have ran him, was in, the, in up in Tan Fran, north of here. And it was a very bad racetrack. He broke track record and broke down in the race. So his whole four-year-old year, he was laid up. This day and age, they would have retired him, as naturally the economics of our business, the racing game, keeps you from running a horse as a four-year-old anymore. I don't think you'll ever see a real top horse race as a four-year-old ever again in our lives, because they can earn too much money in the stud, of course. Mm -hmm. They syndicate them for eight million, seven million, whatever. So they can't earn that much running, plus the fact they're not taking any chance of breaking a leg. But in, Mr. Wright wanted to win a million dollars, be the first mil uh, have Citation be the first million dollar horse, and kept him in racing. And he eventually broke the million dollar record, but he was never the horse uh, uh, after he broke down as he was before he broke down. All right, let's get to the real question now. I'm going to ask each of you. Of course, you would be the best to answer because you rode Citation and you saw Secretariat. In your opinion, if they were both three year olds, Every condition the same, and we put them on the track together, who would have won? I don't think you can answer that, Kurt, and be knowledgeable about it. I mean, that's great barroom talk. You know, you can argue forever who was the best. Uh, Longman is a very good friend of mine. He tells me Count Fleet was the greatest. Shoe Shoemaker tells me Swaps was the greatest. Ron is going to tell you that Secretariat was the greatest, and I'm going to tell you Citation was the greatest. So that you could, that's a matter of opinion. I will say this, though. I don't think that any horse could have beaten Secretariat in the, on Belmont Day. I've never seen a horse do the things that he did that day. Thanks to Eddie Arcaro, Ron Turcott, and Wynn Elliott. And so it was two Triple Crown winners, two wonder horses of our lifetime, will forever be deeply etched in the memory of racing fans. We'll never forget the thrill, the beauty, and the excitement that these two immortal champions have given to America. We may never see the likes of them again. This is Kurt Gowdy saying, that's the way it was when two great thoroughbreds won the Triple Crown of Racing 25 years apart.